a little bit of an eerie feeling at the airport. Uh, not many people are flying in. Everybody is scared to come in, but um, it's it's you know this is the one way that you can support local economy is come. That tourism is the biggest industry, the biggest thing in the Bahamas, and they are the most wonderful, lovely people. On September 3, 2019, Hurricane Dorian made landfall in the Bahamas. Dorian was the strongest hurricane on record to hit the Bahamas, causing catastrophic damage and displacing about 70,000 people. It was devastating. I first heard about the work Chef Jose Andres was doing with the World Central Kitchen when he cooked for the victims of the Hurricane Marina, Puerto Rico. This year, I was following the hurricane very closely. I reached out to Chef Ming Tsai, who was in the Bahamas with Chef Andres, and asked how I could help. Chef Ming connected me with a team in Nassau. After inquiring about what they might need, what I can bring, I was told that they can use some chef knives. And so I carefully packed up the knives just in case, grabbed the first aid kit and some snacks for the team and left for the airport. Upon landing, I noticed the sand looked disturbed around the island. In Nassau Airport, I met Chef Grace Ramirez, not realizing that that was going to be the beginning of the most beautiful friendship. We were taken to the catering kitchen in Atlantis and the work began. We got the debrief of what was going on, loaded the truck and went to deliver meals to a local church that worked with the refugees. They were very grateful. That evening we had dinner with the team and learned about the incredible work they'd been doing. Besides distributing to local shelters, they had helicopters delivering food to other islands. While the local kitchen in Nassau was making anywhere between 7 and 15,000 meals a day, the mobile kitchen in Freeport was doing even more. They used giant paella pans to make thousands of meals for those who lost everything. The next day we were in the kitchen from 7 a.m. till, oh, I don't remember, maybe 8 or 9 at night, cooking pounds and pounds of pasta, lunch, dinner, organizing the walk-in fridge. It was incredible. And time flew by really fast. Let's just cook 80 pounds of pasta. Why not? Girls are here in action. I had two hours before I left for the airport, so I cleaned 100 pounds of zucchini. Hi, this is Natalia, and I am coming to you from the Bahamas. So I um, saw the devastation that the Hurricane Dorian has done to the Bahamas and completely destroyed Abacos, and I got an opportunity to volunteer with uh, World Central Kitchen and it's been so i landed here on saturday and it's monday and i'm at the airport uh getting ready to go back home so it was a quick trip but i uh, was able to bring some supplies for the chefs uh, and work alongside the most extraordinary people so the world central kitchen it was started by the chef jose andres and it is incredible so food is the way that i show love and what a better way to um, show love and care for the people who have lost so much. Um, so the food has been distributed through multiple shelters uh, in Nassau. We worked out of uh, the catering kitchen in Atlantis. There's a, um, certain things I couldn't film. Um, but the devastation is obvious. Uh, Nassau is fine, Nassau got spared, but the other islands are, it's just, it's extraordinary. So every day we would make meals for anywhere between three and 5,000 people. And uh, you know, a lot of people, they have um, sometimes, you know, doubts about volunteering or where does my where do my resources go 
or how do I find the volunteer opportunity that's right for me. So for me being a chef, you know, I cook, so this is what I do, this is how I give back uh, most effectively for me. And um, so find what works for you, find that organization that you feel that fits your skills. And the Bahamas are beautiful. I've had a few really fun, fun, exciting vacations here. And uh, so it was actually incredible to come back and volunteer and to meet all of these chefs from all over the world and meet uh, Chef Jose Andres. And it's just what these guys are doing. It is extraordinary. And to help all of those people who have lost everything, there is um, tens of thousands of people that are displaced that have nothing, lost everything. All they have is just what they were able to pack in a suitcase. So to be able to just give them a meal, that was, that was amazing. So um, been some long days, I'm tired, um, very emotional, but um, really it's, it, it was an amazing, amazing opportunity to do this. Here are some like, battle wounds, <laughs> burns, cuts, scrapes, but it's alright. Good job got done. And the story continued in New York City. So guys, please listen to me for a second. I promise you I will not kick you out, but listen to me. I hope you you've been watching the faces of those people. I hope you've been watching those amazing color photos there at the end. I hope you've been looking at those videos in real time. I hope you took the time really to look in the eyes of every man and woman. There's one photo there at the end of one woman called Kim. Kim is not any longer with us today. But she was a woman that kept coming every single day for 10 hours a day with a big smile on her face. And they were my surprise when actually the person working the hardest, the longest, and with the biggest smile on her face, her fate was already clear for her. And she didn't want to share it with anybody because she didn't want to bring anybody down. And she kept working harder and feeding harder than anybody. I had an opportunity to attend a World Central Kitchen fundraiser and catch up with new friends. Last year, when we first arrived in San Juan after Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico, we had no idea what it meant for World Central Kitchen. But over 2018, as we served another 3 million meals in California, Hawaii, Guatemala, Indonesia, North Carolina, Florida, and Mexico, we realized that this is our future. A future where in times of crisis, we can be there with a hot plate of food, sharing a sense of hope with those who need it most. A future where we will help local economies in the process of providing relief, helping them to come back quicker and stronger. A future where we believe in the dreamers and invest in the next generation of doers. And a future that means that whatever there is a fight so that hungry people may eat, we will be there. This is our future. This is Wall Central Kitchen. And we want you to be part of it. As a chef, I show my love through food. And to be able to not only feed people in good times, but in times of trouble means so much.